Alright guys, how to come back again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. What a set of matches to start off the final weekend of Mage 2 qualifiers, but also major updates coming out of the Optic camp. We've got Scump and Hex and Rambo confirming that Rambo is no longer the head coach of the Optic team and will not be involved at all directly with the roster after Dachi's return. We'll move into a different position within Optic and presumably his replacement is now going to be JP Krez stepping up from the analyst into the dual role of coach and analyst as well. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always i'd greatly appreciate it plenty to dive into we'll talk about this phase versus lag game in a few minutes time because certainly a lot to say on that one first of all though we've got to talk about ravens versus mutineers it's honestly mad this series was painful it's got to be said i know that a lot of people watch this thinking what are these teams doing on the map half the time yeah not a pretty sight to watch these two teams play each other to be honest of course london a recent change with zero out and paul x back in mutineers of course they dropped brack for dave paddy in a very questionable and what I still believe is a very questionable change and their hard point did not look particularly good as a result of things. Game 1 mutineers, I'm sure they feel like they should have won this one. They kind of threw it away towards mid. A C made a big play. Nasty actually I want to give him his props this series because Nasty I think really turned up especially in the respawns but um, or in the hard point at least because yeah mutineers hard point was not looking so good. A C made a massive play though towards the end of this game 1 to get them the rotation. They somehow win it 250-248 but then the search and destroy as kind of expected Florida Mutineers take it. Dave Paddy made some nice plays here, hopping the Ninja Diffuse and holding it down on the rather still one-dimensional Fortress Search and Destroy. Then the control, I mean, <laughs> Havoc was actually, there was a bit of drama during game one with a team kill and uh, Havoc kind of got his own back here <laughs> towards the end of the game, tried to get his spot on the what to do pull-ups as they like to do here at the Florida Mutineers. So pretty funny stuff, but uh, they were obviously feeling confident they were going to be able to win this series because they know that if it goes game five, they are going to be the team to beat. They actually won the control and this control, I'm sure London feel like they should have won this one. I mean, look at this round. As team is making plays, they should have surely closed out this game 3-1. They lost this round, lost the round 5, won the map 4 hard points, but eventually went down in the search and destroy in very controversial fashion, actually. Now, this has been banned now for a few days. I think it's this kill that's getting people annoyed. So Major Maniac's in this kind of interesting spot here, down by the stairs, and this, I believe, is considered the stair glitch. So if you get near a staircase and go prone, you're pretty much invisible to the guy that you're looking at or he just straight up can't shoot you it's a real issue of course on a hotel but there's also this spot here on embassy he gets this second kill and i'm pretty sure that nasty would have had no chance to kill him there just it's a glitch in the game that means major maniac basically just has a one-way free kill now i'm not saying nasty would have killed him anyway but um you know nasty was not happy about it and then the final kill in fairness major maniac just gonna stand up again but um i mean yeah look nice three piece but uh, i mean major maniac's laughing about it havoc is as well and they were not happy about that after the series so we're stair glitching all year what thought they got ga'd a few days ago apparently not and uh yeah havoc was thinking what was going on here and even nasty says that stair glitch has got to get patched most ridiculous thing i've ever seen but zinx reckons if that was challengers that'd be a forfeit right or at least you know it's ga the challengers have decided you know what let's not abuse this stuff for the pros i mean you know it's getting to the point where the cdl might have to step in here the snaking's gone very far indeed we've now got pros you know openly abusing these glitches in the cdl matches for competitive advantage you know where's the integrity it was a big point that slasher raised the other day but now it's like you know you can do it too all this summer stuff so yeah pretty frustrating for a lot of the pros and also for the viewer experience as well and i do wonder if the cd will have to step in and say you know what guys this is basically cheating and we're going to stop you doing it however they're going to manage to achieve that or of course they might not do that and then the chaos continues but yeah kind of as i predicted as many people thought florida winner game five havoc major maniac had a great series by the numbers nasty had a good series in london but uh, yeah just not to be both these teams are just not particularly good dave paddy made the return almost 70 and 70 not quite this is basically the 70 and 70 for modern warfare 2 with um slightly lower generally like kills and damage in this game than it has been previously but he had the most damage on his team so i guess fair play for that one big story really though on the optic side we know that dashi returned to the team after getting dropped a while ago he went rogue on stream calling out rambo all the bowling drama and today is the day where optic decided to make their announcement as to what is going on with rambo he came onto the stream he said 
his piece on exactly what's been happening here. Confirmation that he's no longer the head coach of Optic Tech says he'll be moving completely out of involvement with the team. Might be working with them indirectly, but certainly will not be, you know, coaching him on what to do on the map or even from a mental kind of out of the game perspective. We know the relationship with Dashi isn't really there and he's going to step away and he didn't, I don't think I've got the clip to share with you guys. He basically said he's going to be like um, a content creator coach giving, I think it's going to be really interesting to see his analysis for the community, kind of like what Sean Gares does a bit over in Valorant. I think it's going to be great for everyone involved, but it's quite clear here that the team has chosen Dashi over Rabo, which, you know, might make sense. Yeah, you know, I, I've it's been like two weeks of going through this motion of thinking about what I want to say and how I want to approach this. And honestly, I just want this team to succeed at the end of the day, whether my involvement is direct or not. Like this team and this organization I've played for, worked through my life, been in COD for 15 years. Whatever whatever needs to be done for this team to succeed is what I want. And if that were, that basically means that my involvement is indirect in the team, so be it. All right, and now that you are not coaching the team, what is the next step for you? Okay, okay, let me defend Ray really quickly. Yeah, please do. I'm going to defend Ray, okay? Bring the camera to me, please. <laughs> Ray was wrongfully made, well, what? wrongfully made out to be bowling and this matchup. And this so was this all happened when people what, were mad. When people are mad, they exaggerate that things. That I'm talking about yeah, Brandon, it happens. That's how it always goes. Yeah, Ray yeah, went so bowling so post scrims, maybe missed like it happened once. <laughs> it happened once this year. It has happened before as well, but you maybe missed like a couple maps. It's not like you missed a whole a whole set. You missed maybe a couple maps. And it's not like you didn't have help either. You had Troy, you had JP. I mean, dude, I've always, I feel like I always handed myself in a mature way within the public and the community. I just, I really, again, I just wanted this team to win. I love everyone on the team, even Brandon for what it's worth, for all the yep. issues that we've had. And, and obviously projected in some interesting ways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I really want Why to see are people succeed. Say so I made this absolutely incredible meme here to sum up the situation, but Dashi came back in and um, I mean, yeah, so long Rambo, right? He's straight out of there. No questions asked. Now it does seem to me and I think others as well as uh, Ronnie said here on Twitter that, you know, probably they wouldn't have done this unless others on the team probably agreed that this might be the way to go. Dashi said that the issues that he had with Rambo's coaching style were potentially had by the other players is. They just weren't saying them outright to the rest of the team. Dashi was the only one being vocal about these type of things. The mini map recording of the VODs and just idea, you know, vetoes and stuff like this that Rambo, in Dashi's opinion, didn't handle particularly well. Maybe the other guys had those same opinions and thought, you know what, it might make more sense just to get Rambo out of there for now. And obviously, so far, it's worked well for them. So yeah, I feel bad for Rambo because Scum was coming to his defense, right, saying that Dashi was exaggerating a lot of the bowling stuff, which is more than likely accurate as well. But the meme at least does live on. He did miss at least one or two bats for bowling over the course of the last couple of years. So that's still pretty funny. But um, yeah, I think it's interesting for Optic now because they didn't really confirm what their plan is in the future, whether JP is now going to be the coach analyst there, which I think might make sense. I mean, I don't know. Some of these players don't need to be coached in that traditional sense. I think it can be positive for the team, but also for Rambo now gets to kind of fully step into the GM role, not have to worry too much about the drama within the team and just kind of deal with what he wants to do from the general manager side, but also make some great content on, um, you know, how to play Call of Duty at high level, which I think is going to be very interesting for everyone as well. So hopefully it works out for all involved, but I do wonder if down the line Optic will get another coach in that has a different approach to it, or whether they think that their actual current setup is the way to go in the long term. It's still a very interesting development. Intrigue your thoughts and all that's in the comment section below. Now we've got to dive into the final two series of the day. Firstly, Vegas, TJ Hanley at the camera again. Can you believe it? Versus the New York Subliners. And man, this is just, um, it's tough to watch Vegas right now. They're so close at times to being there, but they always just fall short. And I feel like this was, you know, so predictable at the start of the season, right? They were ahead in the first couple of weeks. I think a lot of people knew that their major one run was the chance to do something special. I thought they might even get top four. They ended up top six. But after that, the kind of lack of talent I think they do have inherent to the team is going to hurt them as other teams improve. And against a well-oiled machine like the subliners, they kind of stand no chance. They did a good job game one to keep 
keep it close. They could have won map one here, which would have been interesting. Their search and destroy at some point was going to fall off. They weren't going to be able to keep up that incredible record of winning searches forever. Especially because every single team in the league will be analysing what Vegas have been doing over the last few weeks to try and figure out how to counter it and all this. So, you know, it was inevitable that at some point one team would get the better of them in this game mode. They do go down 2-0 and at this point it's absolutely fatal. Their control has not been good. New York Sublet is the best control team in the world. These guys are unbelievably well coordinated. Hydra is making plays everywhere and um, yeah, man, this New York team is just such a well-oiled machine as I said earlier. They're so fun to watch. The pacing is so good. The SMG lines, I mean, this round three versus eight, they had to win this one. I'm sure Vegas will be kicking themselves for this defeat and losing this round that led into another relatively swift 3-0 win in control for the New York Soledas. They do this so often, it seems, nowadays. They almost did it against FaZe the other day before getting reverse swept in it. And even Soledas have said, blow it up, right? So they believe that, um, yeah, this team is not long for this world. I do wonder what the future is here because I know we've discussed the possibility. Could you change out the SMG duo? Could you bring in a Capsidol? Could you try something else there? I still feel like that's probably the best attempt they have. But at the same time, Clay individually has not been playing well. I do feel like the online situation with the fact that they're not in a facility, it does hurt them an awful lot against many teams. But on an individual level, Clay has been having a pretty hard time so far. Tough to say exactly who calls the shots over there, but you know, when things aren't going so well for Clayster, his mental won't be so good, his vibes won't be so good in scrims, and you know, I do wonder whether there's a point where the team decides, you know what, Clay, we want to maybe go down a different route. I hope it doesn't happen, but you know, you can kind of see it coming. The possibility of Clayster also not surviving this year as did Scump, of course. But admittedly, for different reasons, he also goes on to say, you know, GG's, I don't even know what to say anymore. So uh, yeah, hopefully Clay and the boys can bounce back, but it's just so tough for these guys online right now. Hopefully they can have a good run of the major, but they'll probably be starting in losers, so it just makes it very challenging indeed. These were the overall numbers for the series. Clay's a point seven. We've got Temp, though, had surprisingly less kills. Temp was only 37 kills. Don't see that very often, but like, this is the exact stat line you want for the subliners. Hydra's got a 1.3, Kismet's got a 1 dead, and then the ARs are going off. I mean, that is the recipe for success from subliners and they're showing that there is definitely a skill gap in this game. And what an absolute banger series then to close out the day. This was meant to be the revenge for both parties. I expected a 3-2 for FaZe. I thought it was going to be close. This, I think, does solidify LAG's potential contenders here going into the major. And damn, they're going to be gutted at losing this one, I can't lie. Game 1 again, LAG keep up their phenomenal winning streak in Harpoint. It was inevitably going to come to a close, but we know that they pushed FaZe to a Game 5 at Major 1 when they were the Academy now they're basically the same team with Arsties there instead of Diamond Con and they're looking better and better week by week. FaZe are a bit of a weird team. Selian went 35 in 23 game one but um, you know, we haven't seen the same Simp and Abizi as we have before. There's arguments maybe that now we're in the post slide cancel era that maybe they're just not as powerful nowadays as they used to be and after game two where FaZe lost again there was tweets like this FaZe are chalked right now and honestly it did look like they were but all of a sudden Abizi decided you know what I'm not going now without a fight. I'm gonna absolutely smoke these guys in the control. Went 27 and 8 on the control for a 3-1 win. The highest KD in a respawn so far this entire season. Like, that was just a ridiculous map. Slasher was 7-7. Seven and seven. Big chilling as the BZ just completely took over. And then the game 4, Mercado Harpoint, was ridiculous. It was 102 to 59 in LAG's favour. And then FaZe just won everything for like 3 minutes straight. They went 200 straight points, four back-to-back -back kills. I've honestly never really seen anything like this. FaZe just hit different gear and just destroyed LG and it's like that's what FaZe are capable of when they're on form. When Simp is going crazy and we saw some good highlights from Simp when, you know, Beezy's doing his thing as he still can do and when Selium's on an eight streak and Sasha can do whatever and they're still gonna fry so, like, we see glimpses of where we know FaZe can be but we haven't really seen them do that for an entire series. We finally got two maps in a row where they did it really. A B Easy here, but he was leading by example. And then it went to a game five, a game five in which it felt like the momentum had gone entirely back the other way. This one versus three in round one from Arsatis set LAG up to what would become a 4 0 advantage. And man, I thought it was GG done for. There was a round where Sasha could have potentially clutched it. Joe Deceives got the job done. Ultra confidence coming out of the Los Angeles Grillers camp. But all of a sudden, 4 0 in their favor, it becomes 4 1. Then Sasha clutches a big and very impressive 1v2 to 
to keep them alive. Then they were in a spot down 5-2, where I think it's a 1v2 for Arsizi gets one, Abizi flies out, gets the trades, and then the rounds keep going in FaZe's favour. They get another, I think Slasher got another three piece to set up a round 11. So, I mean, man, this is crazy. Like, what a great series to close up the day. All the maps were super interesting. And for it to finish game five, round 11 was impeccable. But round 11, FaZe just to Icy. Slasher, I think, got the first spots. He got another kill as well. And Asti starts off this game, I think, seven and one, closing out 10 and eight. And his counterpart in Slasher did the opposite and came back roaring at the end of the game. So, yeah, lots of credit deserved on Slasher's side for turning up in the surge. That's what Slasher was brought into this team to do in part, was to improve their search and destroy. It wasn't as good last year with Arsties as they'd have liked it to be. I think it is better with Slasher. Whether they were a better team with Slasher, I don't know. I think the jury's still out on that one. But that is going to be a painful defeat for the Los Angeles Grillers. They're in such a good position there. FaZe win another game five. They've done it against New York. They've done it against LAG. And I said earlier today, this is the chance for LAG to actually prove they're a potential threat of the major. I think they've done that in this series, right? They did show that they could be very competitive in the respawns, but I just don't have that ice factor yet that FaZe still seem to maintain. And Selium got away with one already because he dropped to 1.55 in this series, but he did win in a game five round 11. So at least he can take that one to the bank. If the results would have been reversed, it would have been a rather different thumbnail more than likely. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.